guys, what's going on? It's Gukil here. Uh, I'm making a video because today there was a pretty important post that went up on the official Diablo forums. I'm going to bring it up for you guys if you haven't seen it. But the new community manager, Kauza, or Kauza, I'm not sure how to say it. But uh, he just posted up something on the Diablo 3 community forums, which is about the new patch 2.5. 4.1 PTR that is going to be available soon for some testing. Uh, there's some pretty big bombshells here as far as the current meta for Diablo 3 and, and what this kind of means for the game as a whole uh, involved in this post. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to bring it up and we're going to look through it together. I'm going to give you kind of my initial thoughts on some of the changes that I see here so far and where they're going to go with it and whether this is going to be good for the game or not. Now, obviously, keep in mind, I'm somebody who plays Demon Hunter. So from a personal bias point of view, there's going to be some changes here that I love, but they're also selfish. And I don't wish misery upon the people that are genuinely having fun with their class or character that they're playing. But let's take a look here. OK, so we have here we've been at work. We've been hard at work on our next patch which is soon going to bump us up to version 2.4.1. Uh, the first thing that they've been looking at is the prevalence of barbarians in group play beyond Greater Rift 80 and how they're being used. While many classes bring party-based buffs, the damage reduction of Ignore Pain mob rule combined with Pride of Cassius is currently a clear outlier. As a result, we will be reducing the party benefit of Ignore Pain mob rule from 50% to 25%. To ensure this doesn't harm the overall viability of group play, we are also reducing the damage on monsters at high greater rifts. This allows not only groups with barbarians to remain in the near same levels in terms of incoming damage, but it offers alternative group compositions for greater survivability. So my first reaction to that is it's obvious that they are reducing the damage that high greater rift monsters deal as a direct way of making sure that they don't entirely break what people have already done. And what I mean by that is that if you were to just straight up nerf ignore pain from 50% to 25% and not change anything else, then that pretty much means that those people who have cleared Greater Rift 103, 104, whoever's on top of the leaderboards right now, maybe people are farming Greater Rift 100, what that means is that they are instantly not going to be able to do that. And so therefore, there's going to be people who have gem ranks and, and etc. that people are not going to be able to obtain. So they're trying to make sure that things stay balanced out. I'm not sure if they're going to be reducing the damage that mobs deal if that actually means that there's going to be a big change in compositions. I still think that 25% damage reduction overall constantly throughout the rift is a little bit too overpowered to ignore. Uh, we'll see what it does, but it, it, the intent behind it is good. Uh, I hope what will happen is for at least next season, because you can tell that this is, if this is going to be a 2.4.1 PTR, then they want to introduce this into the game still during season five. So I hope for season six and the changes that they make for that, that they keep this ignore pain change, but they also bring the damage that monsters deal back up to what they were so that we can actually see how group comps change and, and the viability of barbarians, especially in a support role where they go forward. Uh, next up, Wyatt Chang had posted about Teguk, the legendary gem. They're going to be making some significant changes to Teguk. So the first thing is that Teguk will not only work for channeled powers. Teguk will now stack more quickly, but also drop off more quickly. The maximum is now 10 stacks, and you'll lose the stack after 1.5 seconds instead of 3 seconds. And the R percent component has been changed to 2% per stack. So the idea here is that there's been a lot of complaints, uh, from me included, about having to micromanage Teguk. And what I mean by that is that Teguk, if, if you can micromanage it and keep the buffs up constantly, it winds up being just one of the best game or gems in the game, sorry. Uh, it, just the armor, the toughness, as well as the damage, it's too good to ignore. Uh, you see tons of classes using it. For example, uh, my Martyr Demon Hunter uses it, my Unhallowed Essence Demon Hunter uses it just to keep the damage rolling. And it's very, very annoying to continually keep up your stacks. And it's very frustrating when you're in the middle of perhaps a greater rift run and you are doing really really well and you lose attention for a second on your Teguk stack and it falls off and you go immediately from having this huge damage and armor buff to having nothing so they're obviously trying to change this to keep this more for classes that are going to have to consistently channel something so i'm thinking like whirlwind barbarian and uh ray of frost or disintegrate wizards just to think about that they're trying to tailor that gem specifically for them and also trying to make it so that it's not so overpowered that they're going to constantly have it up. They're going to have to be really careful about how much of their energy source that they're using so that they don't just go from full resource to none and then 
they're fine still because Teguk is going to be up. It's going to fall off pretty quickly, but it's also rewarding in the sense that Teguk doesn't stack up so high. Um, so then that way you're not losing too much power. Um, I feel like in its current state, and this is why we need to test this as players, I feel like in its current state, Teguk is going to wind up being uh, not very valuable. I think it'll wind up really, really falling off uh, in terms of legendary gems that people use, but maybe there'll be some changes coming up that we don't know about. But for right now, I think this is a pretty hard nerf to Teguk, and it's probably not going to see a lot of usage if it hits live servers. And then lastly, the thing that I really wanted to see, because I love when things get changed to break the meta, we're changing Twisted Sword for Wizards as well as Selanium. We've seen in group compositions as a playstyle based around Wizards spamming Energy Twister while the group spams Health Globe Regeneration. We received a ton of feedback and we agree that the manipulation of generation of Health Globes is not good for the game. So what we're changing is that Twisted Sword is going to get a cap at 5 Energy Twisters and Selanium is getting an internal cooldown of 8 seconds. Now, um, the Selanium nerf seems pretty harsh, uh, even though I'm not a fan of the current meta and the current gameplay. Uh, the Selenium nerf is pretty steep. Uh, <laughs> eight seconds for a glow being spawned uh, is a pretty big nerf. And hopefully that doesn't mean that's now health globe regeneration and nurse doctors and even demon hunters using Selenium as their support builds. Hopefully that doesn't disappear entirely. Uh, but Twisted Sword getting a cap is a pretty big one. And I wouldn't be surprised if now you see wizards being subbed in for different classes such as witch doctors or demon hunters now as being the damage of the group because we've been able to see wizards get up to 16 17 18 stacks of energy twister depending on your paragon level and your gear of course and now that only being able to cap out at five means that's a huge damage nerf absolutely huge damage nerf and i think that there's going to be classes that are going to now come in and are actually going to be able to outperform what uh twisted energy or twisted sword using wizards will be able to do um, so it means that the exponential scaling for Energy Twister won't be possible. Um, basically, they are saying that if you use Twisted Sword as, as normal, so if you're using it for solo play or whatever you decide to use Energy Twister for, you're not going to see much of a change, but in group play, you're not going to be able to just consistently spam Energy Twister, so it's going to change the meta. So in short, the summary from this is that you should be able to play support builds, you should be able to have your wizard feel po powerful, but what we found with both of the above cases regarding Selenium and Twisted Sword is that it's a negative effect on group dynamics and class play style. And you heard that from me in my last video, hey, I decided to roll Demon Hunter. Well, you gotta try really, really, really hard to justify being a support because your damage is nowhere comparable to wizards. Hey, Crusader, Sorry, dude, Like you just don't bring the same support utility and you don't bring the same damage utility. Witch Doctor, your support. Monk, your support. Barbarian, your support. And so on and so on. So this is really going to shake up the dynamic of group play. Um, the one negative that I will say about this is that I do think that... Obviously, this kind of stuff isn't easy to do, and there's probably a lot of internal testing that goes along with it, as they don't want to make a change that's going to just immediately piss off the players. So, for example, if you had tested the PTR with your clan mates or your group of buddies, and you knew that this group comp was going to be really, really good, so you rolled your characters around making that group comp, and then it gets nerfed within three or four days, that's obviously going to upset some people who invested their early part of season reset playing those characters so i understand that it takes some time but i think for unfortunately for a lot of people this is still a case of just too little too late it's been so long of this meta existing in season five that i question whether it's even worth it to put these changes in for season five still and maybe that's not the plan when i saw 2.4.1 that kind of read out to me that this was going to be a Basically, they want us to test what's going to be a hot fix, but I feel like they should maybe just leave the game as it is for now and let these changes sweep through for that period between Season 5 and Season 6 for people to, to test it out, as well as then just putting it live for Season 6. Because I think that at this point, there's so many people that are so far behind in Paragon levels that these changes, while it's going to be awesome to be able to be invited to groups when you play different uh, builds or different classes that aren't normally in the meta, this might not cause you to return to the game immediately because you're just going to look and see how high people are ahead of you and go, even if I play my class now, which is pretty fun, I'm still, I have no hope of catching up and I'm just not going to, I'm not going to bother with it. But that's obviously for people who play the game with a little bit more of a uh, competitive edge and play it with a little bit more of a hardcore play style. I think in general, these changes are really good for the game. Uh, I wonder what you guys think. Uh, I'm going to leave the link 
to this forum topic in the description so you guys can check out the official forums for yourself. I've obviously said my opinion. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Uh, if you guys liked hearing my thoughts, and this is honestly kind of a new thing for me is doing a reaction video based on a forum post by a Blizzard employee. If you guys like this style of video, let me know by hitting the like button. And again, if you guys like to hear more Diablo content, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. Thanks, guys, for listening to my thoughts. And I will hopefully see you all in Sanctuary.